So let's see if we can figure this little guy out. The customer says it starts but won't stay running. It's a little Tecumseh three horsepower side shaft engine. Never worked on one this small, but uh, they're all the same. All horsepowers seem to be the same, have the same style carburetor and whatnot. Uh, since it will start and won't stay running, I'm assuming we have a carburetor problem or a fuel delivery problem, so I'm going to zoom right in on that. So a lot of Tecumseh carburetors are non-adjustable. Um, this one is adjustable. You have to adjust the slow speed and the high speed. Let's take the float bowl off. It's a 7 16th wrench that I'll use. I've already loosened this one up and let all the gas drain out. That's what that looks like. And you can look inside the carburetor, there's quite a bit of sediment. If you look inside the carburetor, you will see that it's in pretty good shape also. Not a lot of rust or corrosion, so that's a good sign. Wasn't Since this carburetor wasn't that dirty, I think I'm going to um, just do the bare minimum to it. I'm going to try and rebuild it on the engine um, and just replace some of the, the main components that wear out. Hopefully that'll work. If it doesn't, I'll have to take the carburetor off and soak it and give it a more thorough um, inspection. But I think this is going to work. I'm going to take this off to give you guys a better view. Well, as I was saying, nice and clean on the inside. This style of Tecumseh carburetor does not have the removable nozzle up in there. It has a permanently fixed brass nozzle, or they call them emulsion tubes. You can see it up in there, maybe. It's brass. Nothing to replace up in there. This carburetor was in good shape. I'm not sure why it was failing, um, but let's check some stuff out here. So where the needle valve goes up in there, you have a little rubber seat that you have to remove. Um, I have a special tool I got from Tecumseh here. You just stick it up in there, hook it, and it pulls right out. See that? Here's what that tool looks like. It comes from Tecumseh. So you put the new seal on this end and you push it into place. One thing you want to make sure of is that you put the groove side uh, the seat has a groove in it on one side. Can you see it there? And that's the side you push into the carburetor. Tecumseh part number 670377. Blow some air in there. Clean out the uh, fuel tank. That uh, helps get out what's left in the fuel line. fuel line is in uh, pretty good shape, so I'm just going to leave it. Once I know the fuel system is all cleaned out, I will, um... Ah, it's just the phone. Don't mind that. Once I'm sure the fuel system is all cleaned out, uh, I'll start to reinstall things into the carburetor. Cleaned and dried out. And here is the Tecumseh part number. I always recommend using authentic Tecumseh parts. And this is what comes in the kit. You can see a seat, a new needle, a gasket, and the other gasket. It's only about five bucks for this kit. It's the new seat going on. And just make sure you're installing it groove side down, like that. I'll spray a little bit of lubricant on there, <clears throat> just to make it easier to go into place. And you just press it into place. Let's do that. One of the things I always do 
and recommend doing before you put the float back on is to shake it and listen to see if there's any moisture that has gotten inside. You can shake it and listen for liquid in there and that'll tell you if the float has been compromised. This one is still good. Oh, I'll put the clip on here. I don't think it makes a difference which way you put this on, this way or this way. This can be kind of tricky doing this. Just make sure that the little spring clip doesn't get knocked out of place. Takes a very steady hand. Oh! Try it again. So, be careful here. Oh yeah, I think we're in. I'll show you how to check the float level. Normally I just turn the carburetor upside down to check the level. But since this is on the machine, since this is on the engine, not, we're not going to be able to do that. We just want to make sure that when the float closes, uh, it's about even all the way around. I'll show you what I mean. So you can see when the float closes that the gap is uneven on that side. See the gap is uneven. Uh, it's less on that side than it is this side. So you'll want to bend that tab um, so it closes right about there. I just stick a long screwdriver in there. Bend the tab up a little bit. Yeah, see it looks like I've gone too much. So I'll just push it down so that gap looks about right to me now. So I think that that floats adjusted correctly. When it's time to deal with this little guy, there is a few things that you need to check out. Uh, you can see there's a couple of holes on that side, pretty small. So you want to you'll want to poke some wire down. Make sure that uh, that hole is freed up as well as the other one. Unscrew this. There's an O-ring and a washer in there. That O-ring is in pretty sad shape. I should replace it. And I'll want to make sure to poke wires through those holes there to make sure that this part is all cleaned out. The tip of this uh, adjustment needle is pretty rusty so I'll clean that off. You don't want to sand this too much because you can alter it just enough to clean it up. You have the spring, the little brass washer, and the o-ring. Time to replace this o-ring. I found a new o-ring. Don't ask me the part number. I think you have to buy a whole kit, but I had this loose small o-ring here that will work. According to the manual, the initial preset for the main jet here is you turn it all the way in, you lightly you lightly tighten it until it stops. Right there, it stops. And you'll want to back it out a turn and a half. One and a half. So half, one, one and a half. That's where you want to start. I think I will go ahead and take out the slow speed screw here too and clean that out. The setting for this uh, you set it just like the other one, but you only turn it out one turn. Looks like there's an O-ring and uh, washer down in there too. Let's see if I can get it out. There's the washer. If I can get it out. Yeah, I should replace that one. I'll also put a little bit of carburetor cleaner through there. I have a new O-ring. So you don't want to tighten it down too hard. You can damage things. So just until it seats. I 
there, you back it out one turn. Okay, let's go back together here. Float bowl's nice and clean now. The float bowl does go on a certain way. See that flat spot on the bottom? You want to line that up with the hinge here so it goes on just like this. As I always say, you want it tight, but not too tight. It's very easy to strip this stuff out. This is an aluminum carburetor body, a brass jet. It's easy to break stuff. Okay, I think we're good. Time to test this baby out. Let's see if it holds gas. We can only hope. I really didn't find what was uh, preventing this motor from running. Everything looked pretty clean. Uh, it may have been that the, uh, the float needle valve in the seat needed to be replaced. Who knows? Uh, this one will chalk it up to being a mystery. So now that we have everything adjusted to the preliminary settings, uh, the initial settings, we're going to want to start it up and once it warms up we will fine-tune the carburetor. To do that, we will, once the engine is warm, we will uh, slow it down to an idle and that screw there is what affects fuel flow during slow speed operation or idle operation. Uh, the initial setting was one turn out um, and when adjusting that you will turn it to the left until the engine starts to uh, run worse and then you will turn it to the right very slightly uh, until the engine starts to run worse and you'll find the happy spot in between, if you know what I mean. Usually you don't have to even turn it more than, uh, you know, a quarter turn each way. So turning it uh, counterclockwise would allow more fuel into the engine, and turning it clockwise cuts off the fuel supply into the engine. And remember, this is just at slow speed operation. So uh, make sure to adjust it when the engine is idling. And then we have the main speed adjustment screw, which is this one here. And we do the same procedure, except we rev up the engine and let it run as fast as it, it runs and uh, adjust that. And you will do the same thing. You will turn it to the right ever so slightly until the engine starts to lose performance and then you will slowly turn it back the other direction until it starts to lose performance and uh, somewhere in between those two uh, adjustments is a happy spot and that's what you want to find is the happy spot to where the engine runs nice and smooth and once again you're not going to turn that screw more than probably a quarter turn in each direction to find the happy spot as long as you have the preliminary, uh, the initial settings set correctly on those screws, uh, it's usually pretty easy to fine tune it. You'll see me adjust it once I get, get this thing running and warmed up. Hopefully I explained that you have your slow speed adjustment or your idle adjustment circuit. And I don't mean, and I don't mean how fast it idles. Uh, this is your actual idle adjustment screw. This is the fuel mixture screw for the idle circuit or the slow speed circuit. And then that's your main jet and your main circuit so you have to adjust that as well. We'll need the air filter back on to tune it properly so let's put that on.
good news I don't see any gas leaking out of the carburetor I moved it out here so it wouldn't fill up my garage with fumes let's try it out choke on first pull are you kidding me why the throttle wasn't real responsive was that linkage right there was bent so I bent it back into shape straight and now it, the throttle responds like it should that's how it should respond That linkage is straight, not bound up. So I want to adjust the slow speed jet on slow speed. rev up the engine and to adjust it. That one was set right where it should be. 